this bad. So squat and anti-squat are things you're going to hear a lot in drag racing. And if you're kind of new to the sport, it can be kind of overwhelming at first trying to figure out what they are, how they affect the car, what they do, how you can change them, things like that. So uh, today I'm going to try to just give a good overview on how they work. If you want a more in-depth uh, video, go check out Kevin Wilson SBC. He has a ton of suspension videos and uh, the dude really knows what he's talking about. So let's start at the beginning. What is squat and anti-squat? Unfortunately, it's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, squat is when you apply power in a rear-wheel drive car and the rear of it actually goes down as you apply the power. And anti-squat is quite the opposite of that. It's when you apply power in the back end actually goes up. Kind of seems like witchcraft, huh? I think there's many of us that are used to seeing footage of old street machines like this when they'd launch they'd drop the rear end lift the front and go like that that would be squat where the rear end comes down as it's taken off and then anti-squat if you've seen any of the videos with this thing this thing has incredibly aggressive anti-squat as i'm building boost the rear end you can actually see it start to raise up because this thing has all the factory mounting points on the chassis but the axle has been frankenstein so this thing actually has a <laughs> an enormous amount of anti-squat in it now what you're probably wanting to know is what's better, anti-squat or squat. That really depends on the car and uh, the goal you're trying to accomplish with it and the surface you're on, a bunch of different things like that. But to really get into that first we have to talk about how it's measured. And this is the part that can be kind of daunting for a lot of people because there's a few steps involved in measuring where your instant center is. And your instant center is what determines whether the car has squat or anti-squat. But real quick, let's just imagine from the bottom of the rear tire to basically the top of the front tire is an imaginary line. And then where your instant center falls on that line, whether it's above it or below it, or way back here or way forward, that's gonna determine whether your car has squat or anti-squat. So how do we figure out where the instant center is? That's where we start taking some measurements. And that's where it always comes in handy to have a little notepad that you can write things down. I've been trying to get a lot better at keeping notes on all the cars lately. Cause I'm not gonna lie, there's a lot that I've forgotten about the cars. So notepad always helps. These are like a dollar. So there's a few things that we need to measure. First and foremost, probably the easiest thing to measure is the camshaft height, because the camshaft height is real close to where the center of gravity is gonna be. So on this car, I already measured it the other day, but I'll show you. All it's gonna involve is taking a tape measure, putting it at the ground, and seeing where the camshaft height is. Now, on some engines, it's hard to determine where the camshaft actually is. So what you can do is find the center or a good reference point like a spot on the block or the center of the crankshaft or the crankshaft pulley, things like that. Or even like the uh, bolt for the water pump. Find a reference point and then look up the schematics for your engine and it'll tell you exactly where the camshaft is in relation to that. And then just do the math for that. But I know that the height of this one from the ground is 17 and a half inches. Now, depending on whether your car is a four link or a ladder bar, this case it's a ladder bar. On the RX-7 it is a four link. Uh, you need to measure your bar length. So what I do typically is I'll just put a block out here and measure from the center of the axle to the center of the mounting point. And then that overall length on this car it happens to be 33 and a half inches long. That's our bar length for this car. So just like that, we've already got our bar length and our center of gravity. I guess two of the easier things that we also need to know is the wheelbase. On this car, it's 97 and a half, I believe, and the tire height. And this is a 29 inch tall tire. And this is probably the most inconvenient part, actually sliding under the car and measuring the pickup points for everything. All right, so here you can see the front of where my ladder bars mount, and there's four holes in this one. Some have more, some have less. And uh, what I want to do is measure the height of that hole from the ground, and I want to measure for each hole so that I have a reference. Because if I ever make a, a bar change in the future, I want to be able to just look at my notes and know what percentage is going to put it in. So, in this case, the holes are five, six and an eighth, seven and a quarter, and eight and three quarter. See, right there is all you gotta do. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a four link car, there's a little bit more involved. You need to measure the mounting point for the lower bars and the upper bars. And uh, again, ideally measure the height of each hole 
so that you just know in the future what the bar change would put it at. Uh, but with four-link cars, there's a lot of options. Ladder bar cars or caveman stuff. And then again, back here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to measure the height of the mounting point for the lower mount and for the upper mount. And in this case, the lower mount is 8.5 inches off the ground, and the upper mount is 15.5 inches off the ground. So now we can look back at the list. Things we need to know. We know bar length. We know the upper and lower mounting points on the axle. Those are 8.5, 15.5. Uh, we know the mounting point on the chassis. We've got... Uh, like I said, from five to eight and three quarter. We know the wheelbase, 97 and a half. We know the tire diameter, 29 inch tire. We know the center of gravity, 17 and a half inches at the camshaft height. So now that you have all this information, you can just get on Google, look up instant center calculator, anti squat calculator, anything like that. Um, typically the first one that comes up is, uh, so typically the first one that comes up for me is uh, baselinesuspensions.com. And this is what it looks like. All you gotta do is just type in all the measurements that you just took. You don't need the car weight that I played around with the numbers from 1,000 to 4,000. It didn't change anything. Um, that's just something that's handy to have. But not everybody has access to scales, so don't worry about that right now. And then uh, once you get all that typed in, this is what they'll show you. This is a pretty accurate sketch of how your stuff's set up. And then once you have everything typed in there, just click calculate. It'll tell you exactly what percentage anti-squat you have. And uh, the way it's measured is in a percentage. Um, so you've got 0% up to, I don't even know, probably infinite. But the anti-squat line is at 100%. So if you're at 100%, you have neither squat nor anti-squat. So where your instant center lands on the anti-squat line is what determines if it squats or anti-squats, right? And what causes that basically is if it's above the anti-squat line, then the rear end has leverage to push the body of the car up, right? Because the bar's coming off the rear end, they either have leverage to push the body up, causing it to separate, or they have leverage to push the body down, causing it to squat. That's a real basic kind of explanation on what causes it to squat or separate. So let's go back to the question of what's better. Like I said, ultimately that's gonna depend on what your car wants, what surface you're on, uh, things like that. But Generally speaking, ideal situation is 100% because it's no wasted energy pushing the car up or pushing it down, anything like that. You're using all of your energy to accelerate the car. But that's not usually the case, uh, especially like the street and no prep stuff. You're going to put a good bit of anti-squat in the car to force the tire down into the road. Um, but, you know, maybe your car likes squat. Uh, like I said, it's going to be a lot of just whatever your car wants and how it works the best. So like I said, you can use that calculator. Hopefully you measured all your mounting points and you have those referenced so that you can just put those numbers in the calculator and see how it's gonna change it. Uh, I don't recommend making a bunch of changes until you've had the car out and you see what it does because you might think that it wants something and then you go out there and test it and it just blows the tires off or it crushes the tire, something like that. So to end things off, squat and anti-squat, kind of witchcraft, kind of science, but it doesn't have to be intimidating. Uh, it's all just numbers and it's all stuff you can get to easily. You don't need any special tools. So hopefully this video will help somebody. If it did, awesome. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing and clicking that bell. I'll see you in the next one.